Hello, Theistic Scuffles here. I'm in the middle of having a bite of lunch while I discuss natural morality. We were having a discussion last night, very interesting, about the natural foundations for morality, or if there can be such a thing. What would a naturalistic basis uh, of morality or for morality look like? Um, there are several different um, versions um, that might be proposed to justify mor morality. One key issue to clarify and clear up right away, though, is that to point out that this is not about stating or defining morality as essentially objective or subjective. That's actually entirely irrelevant to the discussion. Now let's move on. Hello, Theistic Scuffles, and I'm here at the uh, Cedar Ridge, I think it's called Cedar Ridge Mall in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. I just got kicked out of a, uh, a little boutique. Actually, it was my daughter's kind of shoving me out of the way. It's too girly of a store. At any rate, getting back to the central point about how morality is grounded, and, and more specifically, whether it can be grounded in natural phenomena, uh, or natural sequences, natural events taking place, what, what does that um, teach us, if anything, about morality? Or, or would it actually show a definitive path, a definitive sense of right and wrong? Now, um, one critical problem which needs to be addressed, which um, historically has been tackled um, in several different ways, but primarily I believe it started with Moore um, and his um, highlighting of the, the is-ought gap uh, so that a natural uh, thing, an is, a, a descriptive, uh, let's say a descriptive event, uh, a description of an event or state of affairs would not produce an imperative. It would not produce an ought. An, an ought here, we are, that would be spelled O U G H T. So it is does not lead to ought. However, in within naturalism and empiricism, no matter what variety or flavor you are trying on, um, you you end up having to ground morality in something. And it really doesn't do well to say, well, I don't need to have um, objective morality, as I pointed out earlier. Because the, the, the discussion isn't whether or not morality is objective, or whether objective statements, which are true or false, can be made about states of affairs considered morally. Um, that is pretty much, that's the nature of the beast. That's just part of the nature of the beast, is that um, even when you claim that morality is subjective and each person has their own preference uh, for how they choose to make moral judgments, um, you end up having even imperatives that come out of that. Um, why should we accept your, your statements, um, or, which really end up being imperatives about how um, to conduct moral discussions? Well, if you've got guidelines for conducting moral discussions, hey, guess what? You've got morality. <laughs> Whether or not it's considered objective or subjective is pretty irrelevant. Um, so at any rate, um, this is a, a key issue, and it was raised, and we had a little bit of a discussion um, last night, early this morning, um, with, with someone about that. And I just wanted to make this quick video response. So we've got this problem, and we, we don't necessarily have a correct uh, path uh, from a natural e event or state of affairs to a moral obligation um, given naturalism or empiricism um, or some non-God worldview. Now, one very brave, valiant, dashing effort attempt to attack this problem by undermining what we might call or define a natural event or a natural property um, is given by uh, David Wiggins in his book Ethics, 12 Lectures on the Philosophy of Morality. I'm kind of reading the cover of it here. I'll uh, just sort of uh, get a little little shot of it here. That's Ethics and that is um, published uh, by Harvard University Press. Um, his method is to attack Moore's um, sense of defining natural so that we can then question, well, what does it mean to have this a natural property, for an object to have a natural property, which would be distinguished from a non-natural or ethical property, such as goodness. So his method 
to attack that is all fine and dandy, but that, however, um, in, uh, he's actually attempting to ground a form of utilitarianism, by the way, I should, I should mention that probably at the outset. So Wiggins' effort here, it's, while it does um, give a lot of philosophical credence to the idea that we can question how, uh, maybe whether there's a solid definition of natural, what it doesn't really throw into question is that we still can't derive moral obligations from um, natural properties, no matter how they're considered, whether or not um, we would say we have a hard time um, perhaps mentally distinguish, distinguishing between natural and non-natural properties of objects or something like this. Again, that, that may be all fine and well, but at the end of the day, that doesn't, that's not really grounding uh, utilitarianism or, or any form of ethics apart from um, some source, um, you know, whether it's a divine source or maybe a written textual source uh, such as the scriptures or something like that. But it's certainly by itself the natural uh, phenomenon art or a description of a natural event, no matter how defined, is not bridging the is-ought gap. And I think that's really uh, what needs to be emphasized uh, in this discussion. So in sum, um, I have a hard time pronouncing the username, the YouTube username, but the OA um, person is really, um, has already assumed that there's a way to bridge this is ought gap. And it sounds like he believes that it's more a matter of just reasoning. So if we just apply enough logic to um, the field of morality will somehow be able to bridge that. Well, that's not quite the case. That would be really handy dandy, but that's that's not going to quite cut it. So um, he needs to come up with something a little bit more uh, plausible, and um, there there really needs to be a way, um, some type of explanation, um, in order for us to believe that there would there could be a source for uh, morality outside of God or some divine source. It needs some sort of ground. Oh, back again in the parking lot of St. Vincent de Paul's in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Beautiful store here. Get down to Rice Lake and check out the newly remodeled thrift store here. Um, at any rate, I always, and really any non-theistic moralist, the, their primary task is, and, and most of them don't seem to grasp this or recognize it, but really it's a matter of defending a particular type of morality. You can't just say one particular natural event would lead us to believe that A, B, and C is is a moral or a, a morally correct course of action. We, we can't derive that from the natural world. That's a myth. That's a, a huge fallacy. But what you can attempt to do is formulate a specific moral position, uh, say borrowing from Kant's deontology or some type, maybe a Benthamite form of utilitarianism or something, and then work that into a position which is rationally grounded in admitting that you don't have any further type of source um, undergirding it. Um, it would just be basically a subjective opinion um, and not really a great deal more than that. Well, wrapping things up here, as my good friend Mere Christian Logic on YouTube, um, at least a YouTube friend, haven't met him in real life yet, but as he suggests in some of his comments on this video, and I know he has um, echoed this uh, critique of non-attempts at grounding non-theistic morality in other instances and in other situations, but um, we looking at the natural world doesn't get you anywhere in terms of a foundation for morality. Um, as he uh, was writing recently, um, apes have all kinds of behavior um, that may or may not have anything to do with what um, human beings ought to be doing. Um, it might give us ideas for how we could act, whether that would be perceived as moral or immoral, or actually be moral or immoral, is com almost completely disconnected from that. Um, <laughs> Again, that would that would just be pure subjectivism. So, if so, someone could certainly make that case and try to correlate something in the animal kingdom or in some other part of the natural world to our world of morality, but um, the for now bridging the is ought gap does not seem to be in the cards. Well, thank you for tuning in to this video critique of Owe, and uh, love to get your response, your feedback, and um, if Owe would like to um, 
uh, provide a, a further critique or further discussion on this topic, that would be splendid. Um, I will certainly look forward to that, and I will also try to figure out how to receive video responses myself, because I have had difficulty with this myself. Bye-bye. <laughs>